Hey guys, Parsons here, back with another video, this time doing the American Tanks tier list for Heroes and Generals. So, I know it's been a while, and uh, I've had a bit of a dry spell on the channel. I uh, have just finished my exams for the semester, so back at it again, and uh, we'll be reviewing these American Tanks according to how strong they are, how fun they are to use, and how economic they are for your credits and experience. So, um, without further ado, let's get cracking. Starting from the bottom up with the, uh, the M2A2. So, this machine gun armed speedy light tank is, in my opinion, the strongest starter tank out of the three. It has the largest machine gun, a 50 cal, uh, and although each of its turrets have limited traverse, uh, its superior speed, firepower, and armor means that it handily beats the other two starter tanks in a head on fight. And it's honestly really effective for just mowing down infantry. It'll serve you well. But um, compared to the later American tanks, well, the American light tanks are in such a good place that uh, you're gonna want to look. You're gonna want to upgrade very, very quickly, even from this uh, the best starter tank. And the one you'll be looking to upgrade to is the Stuart light tank, which is. down here, or more accurately I should say up here, because this is possibly my single highest recommended buy for any tank in Heroes and Generals. This is extremely cheap, it has a very fast respawn time, high speed, massive ammo supply, great armor, it is all around the most cost effective and excellent tank for new players in Heroes and Generals. If you're a new tanker, pick up this tank. If you've been using a Chaffee, I honestly think this is the best American light tank, and arguably the best light tank overall in the game, with the only other contender being the uh, the Panzer II L for the Germans, the Lynx or Luch. Um Right, moving up along the, uh, yeah, keeping up at a rapid pace here, uh, moving up the, um, the progression, the next tank you'll unlock is the M3 Lee. This is a 75mm armed medium tank. It has the most frontal firepower of the uh, the tier 1 medium tanks, but despite that, it's going in D tier. It is cheap, and I was foolishly lured into buying it once upon a time, uh, when I was starting out my first American tanker. It's rubbish, it's always been rubbish, um, it has a lot of deep problems. Uh, it has a terrible lack of armor. Its main gun has very limited traverse, very limited performance, very limited range. It sucks against heavy armor. You can't maneuver. Um, when you fire multiple guns at the same time, the recoil of each of them knocks the other gun off its target, which means you can't even focus fire your 37mm and 75mm guns. It seems on paper like this could theoretically be a good tank, but in practice it's absolute garbage, and it is utterly inferior in every conceivable way to an M4A1 Sherman. It even has a longer respawn time. Because of that, even though it's quite cheap at only about 68,000 credits, mm -hmm. it is such a terrible long-term investment and so utterly unpleasant to use, as well as having no utility whatsoever after you've unlocked a basic Sherman that this has to go straight to D tier. This is probably the worst tank on this lineup. Uh, the next one you'll unlock is the uh, the Chaffee. So the Chaffee is really popular in the war game mode, uh, and that's because it is the only light tank to pack a 75mm gun, um, enabling it to take on medium tanks in a way that other light tanks just can't. Uh, and in a war game, you may, be, you may find yourself coming up against much stronger opponents, and you only have light tanks, and they say have medium tanks or medium tank destroyers. And against them, having the extra punching power of that 75mm gun is amazing. But compared to the Stuart, the Chaffee has, is harder to unlock, far more expensive, has a really, really long respawn time, and slightly less health overall. It's very vulnerable to uh, high damage tanks, 
uh, whether it's getting one shot by uh, enemy heavies or whether it's um, getting just ripped apart by uh, the auto cannon armed German tanks. It definitely has its place, which is why it's still in C tier. It is great for drawn out attrition um, battles and war, where you get max value from each light tank spawn and where you maybe need to fight bigger vehicles with it. But overall, um, for and especially for anyone who's budget conscious, this is easily the uh, the worst light tank decision for a uh, an American tanker. Uh, moving along, we have the, um, the M10 tank destroyer, and after the recent nerf to the M18 Hellcat, this has become probably the go-to American tank destroyer. Um, the only reason that I wouldn't have recommended this as S tier in the past is because the M18 Hellcat was so strong. But now that it's been quite fairly nerfed to 1100 HP, uh, it leaves the M10 looking amazing. Uh, the M10 has it. Don't be fooled by its short-looking gun, because that three-inch gun actually has the same performance metrics as uh, any of the other American three-inch guns on the M18 Hellcat, the EZ8 Sherman, and the Jumbo Sherman. So it's a really powerful gun, and that's coupled with one of the shortest respawn times in the game at just one minute base before you add armor and uh, supply kits and stuff meaning you can spam the heck out of it. It's fast, it's reasonably well armored, it has a good gun. This is all around one of the best performing American tanks for medium tank fights. And it's super cheap, it's only 68,000 credits. This is a really high recommendation from me now. Like, you are looking for an American tank destroyer, this is the obvious choice in most situations. And, yeah, you unlock it so early. Uh, next one up is going to be the, uh, the M4A1 Sherman. So, this is a pretty solid all-around uh, performer. It's great against infantry, um, but the problem is it can't handle enemy tier 3 medium tanks. Is unlike the Panzer IV, or the, um, like, this is the weakest tier 2 medium tank in a head-on fight. Uh, and it's a lot weaker than the Panzer IV or the T 3476, and it's very, very weak against a T 3485 or especially a Panther. You're going to get bodied by Panthers in this thing, unless the Panther driver is completely incompetent, which granted some of them are. Um, it has a gyro stabilized gun, which is honestly quite a big deal if you're a good tanker. A, um, like, this allows you to exploit your mobility while still being precise in ways that you can't with other tanks. It gives it an edge in long-range combat. You're still, you're not going to take on tigers in this thing in a long-range battle, but it allows you to maneuver while still shooting accurately, whereas with almost any other tank you're going to be missing shots when you try and maneuver while fighting. That's just the reality of the bouncing up and down of the tank. So all Shermans share this feature, the gyro-stabilized gun, but it it's worth mentioning for this one because uh, this is sort of <laughs> the first one that we mentioned. That's where it kicks in. Uh, the next one that you get is the, uh, the, like I said, recently nerfed M18 Hellcat. So this used to be one of the best tanks in the game, arguably the most overpowered for what it is tank in the game, because it could absorb an inhuman amount of punishment compared to even more heavily armored counterparts like the Stug 3. Um, like this thing was, and actually still is, able to beat more heavily armored tanks in a head-on fight because of its tremendous firepower, and it still has quite good health. It, this thing has basically zero armor. You can, it's almost vulnerable to heavy machine gun fire, and you will get ripped apart by auto cannons. But it's got the second best speed in the game, coupled with a high performance three inch gun. Its health is still pretty good after the nerfs. Um, this has a longer respawn time and a higher overall cost than the M10, as well as slightly lower health. 
but what it lacks in the head-on combat relative to economy, this thing makes up for in its resource efficiency and its ability to outflank and defeat enemy heavy tanks. So if you're a bit of a, uh, a Timmy and you like to have the, uh, the biggest thing in each class, um, the Hellcat's a good one to pick up. It is... It's got its place. It's not completely superseded by the M10. So, um, that said, I do think the M10 is better overall, especially if you're budget conscious. And especially if you like to run other heavy tanks like the Pershing that have an extremely high respawn time, it helps to have the shorter respawn M10 in the wings. Um, right, next up we have the Jumbo Sherman. So the Jumbo Sherman is uh, the first American heavy tank. It has got tremendous frontal armor, uh, coming in a little bit shy of the Tiger II, but still very resistant. It gets the gyro-stabilized gun. There's the same long three-inch gun as the uh, M10 and M18, um, which is the weakest uh, main gun on any of the heavy tanks in-game. But it also has the second best armor, and surprisingly good mobility, despite that massive weight. So, um, because it tends to absolutely body anything that is weaker than a heavy tank, like, with the current health balancing the way that it is, this tank toasts Panthers and T-34-85s pretty easily. Um... And obviously anything below that is harmless, as long as you keep your front armor on. If you let medium tanks outflank you, they will kill you, uh, because your side armor is only about 40 mil on this tank. They will go straight through it like paper. So um, really important to keep your head on with this tank, and it actually serves you pretty well. It's got similar frontal firepower to the Pershing when you balance its better armor with its weaker gun. And it's much cheaper and more economical. It's quite a good one for mid-level players to pick up to advance your kind of capture and hold status with tanks. Right, moving on. Um, we have the Easy 8 So the Easy 8 is... It, it's easy to describe this as basically being a weaker panther. Um, it is faster than the M4A1, better armoured, and has a much better gun, uh, while still having the gyro stabiliser. So this is far, far stronger than the M4A1 at the cost of having a longer respawn time and a higher cost and credits to spawn it. Um, this is definitely worth picking up if you value your team contribution and being able to conserve resources and still play effectively. Like, you're not making huge sacrifices in the name of efficiency. You, This is a good, all-around, fun-to-use, effective medium tank. But it's not as strong as the Panther. Especially against heavy tanks, its armor penetration is nowhere near as good. So, um, yeah. The Easy 8 is excellent, but it's not going to defeat heavy tanks in a head-on fight. And you, you have to still play it as a medium tank and treat other tanks with respect. Moving along is the M10. I fucking hate playing against the M10 tank destroyer. I mean the M18, sorry. No, what am I talking about? The M36. The M36 is a... It's built on the same Sherman chassis as the, uh, the M10. But... For some godforsaken reason, it has like three times as much health, and it's impossible to gun breach. I don't think I've ever seen one of these things lose its gun breach. I have shot its turret from every conceivable angle until the tank itself has died, which is saying something because of its massive uh, health pool, and the gun breach just never, ever breaks. Which is good for you buying this tank, because... Shit, against anything short of a Tiger II, this thing is really beastly. The 9cm gun will pierce, like, 35 out of 36 tanks in the game really easily. <laughs> um, it 
has similar firepower, slightly worse but similar, uh, to the other um, heavy tank destroyers, and it has insane overall mobility and the turret traverse. This is a really, really good tank destroyer, and when you consider it has a shorter respawn time than either of the heavy tanks and is arguably actually stronger in combat, this is, yeah, this is what you want to be using to fight enemy heavy tanks with. Um, the final contender on our list is the M26 Pershing, and I'm going to put this down into, uh, into C tier. So this thing is painfully unbelievably slow it's actually slower than the uh the overweighted jumbo sherman it is slower than tigers it and it's weaker you're paying the same cost in credits and respawn time as a, uh, a german tanker is for a tiger 2 and shit mate you're just getting a strictly worse tank the pershing is easy to gun breach um anything with an su-85 gun or better or a panther like i i take on the pershing quite regularly in a panther from the front and if you focus as gun breach you can actually defeat a panther quite you can defeat a pershing quite reliably with a panther um yeah it what can i say it's slow it's thinly armored it, it can't penetrate the king tiger from the front and unlike the M M M36, it doesn't have the mobility to outmaneuver those heavy tanks. Plus, it gets saddled with the longest respawn time. Rita, if you are seeing this, you need to reduce the respawn time on this tank because it cannot contend with the King Tiger. And while you're at it, buff the IS-2 as well. It also needs a respawn time buff because the King Tiger is just so much stronger than either of these other kind of tier 2 heavy tanks. You it's unfair to expect them to be symmetrically balanced against it in terms of credits and respawn time when the King Tiger is just so much stronger in combat. But with this and with the M36, you get the amenities of double zoom. I'm pretty sure by memory you get it with the uh, the Jumbo as well, actually, it gets double zoom, I think. Oh, it might not. can't remember. Anyway, uh, no, the Jumbo does not get double zoom. Um... So yeah, with these 9cm guns, you have enough penetration to take on Russian heavy tanks from the front, but they won't defeat a Tiger II's frontal glasses. Um, so flank it with the M36 and just avoid it with the, M20, with the M26. Uh, yeah, that is my tier list for American tanks, according to what I think is your best value for money, where you want to uh, focus on buying. And uh, my thoughts on each of them. So, if you uh, if you guys are still liking this kind of video, make sure you say so in the comments. Leave a like on the video, and um, we may see a follow up one for the German tank. So, uh, if you're interested in that, just hit subscribe, and uh, I will see what I can put out. So, thank you all for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Good night.